It is rocket science. Welcome to Washington, D.C. Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. You can pick up your Spock socks, see lunar rocks, and hang around with space jocks. You boldly go. <laughs> you with hands. The boldly wait in line in Eaton, <laughs> D.C. Shields up. Shields up. There's the USS Enterprise. That one of my mother's cousins, I guess my second cousin, who recently passed, was supposedly sitting at a table with, a, with his father who was in the industry a long time ago. And at the table was one of these two. I think it was Orville, because I think Wilbur passed away before that time period. All right, according to this, this is the real Wright Flyer. Now, its original flight was less than the wingspan of some modern jets. All right, someone doesn't sound happy to be here, but I am. So this little part goes in there. <laughs> okay, in one of my earlier videos, I mentioned this guy. So that's, there's a statue of this in, in St. Pete. So he flew from St. Pete to Tampa in 1914. First passenger service. Oh, yeah. And um, the, the flight, before that, to drive it would take three days. <laughs> All right, we opted not to go inside because there's a really long line. And uh, Cameron here can just go across the street and, and get into one of those, or one of these. Although you don't, where would you go? And he didn't have any. 747s in his fleet. Oh, look at that Ford Trimotor. That's cool. Oh, look at this taking off. That's fun. For Southwest, huh? Okay, air traffic controllers. I know somebody who was one of the Patco that got fired. Really? <laughs> yeah. It still dresses like this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> very, very, very well dressed. What is it, Emirates? Flying Nosh. And some Flying Nosh. Here we go. This is an American flagship. Not him. The, the airplane is. He just works there. He's not a flagship. He's just an employee. All right. Fun. Well, there's a cow, that's a cowling, right? Look at the size of that thing. Oh. There we go. We got um, 
a heart attack. <laughs> a space, Flash Gordon spaceport. Evil can evil. Awful can awful. The Kenneth C. Griffin Explore the Planets. Let's find out. Looks charred. <laughs> Looks charred. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it collected tiny particles and sent the capsule containing it back to it. Okay. Same. Yeah. Wow. I, I, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was. So is that. Well, that one's about the same size as I thought. The little one? All right, there's the three. Okay, what are those? And look at that. Well, what is that? A tribble. There's a tribble. The trouble with tribbles is they look bigger on TV. And those are Spock's ears. That's funny. And there's Spock and mm, Mashup we are. Space Mashup we are. Yoda and, and Spock together? True is not. Home. Exactly. Home. Oh. E.T. Right. phone home. Yeah. Ooh, the Martian Chronicles. Yeah. Okay. Good. Those were the shoes have been on the moon. Well, in 1972, those shoes were on the moon. Okay, they brought back lunar samples in this box. That's pretty fascinating. This so called rock box was used on both Apollo 14 and 16 missions. And an aluminum mesh liner helped absorb shocks caused by re-entry and splashdown. The special triple seal was designed to prevent contamination of samples before they could be examined under lab conditions. This is a piece of the moon. And it's fell apart. Oh, right. This is a... Actual module from the 70s. That's, that's remarkable. Apollo 11. This is the, the. This went to the moon. Well, it got close to the moon, and then they got out and went into the other thing, the Eagle. Apollo 11 lunar landing module, the LAM. Fascinating. Those are engines. 
orange and cowlings. And the Apollo 13. And there's the one from the movie, the filter they had to make. Not from the movie. That's literally the canister mock-up that they made on Earth and just and told them how to replicate it while they were in space. And there they are trying to replicate it in space. So the problem was that on the command module they were square and on the lunar module they were cylindrical. So they had to match those up with parts available on the ship. All right, here's the simulator desk, Apollo 13 mission simulator. I think the, the camera I'm using seems more complicated and more advanced than their system there. Gemini 7. Fourteen days in that cramped cockpit. Amazing. Fourteen days. All oh, right, here's the first Amazon employee in space. He worked for Bananas. There's the X-Wing. That's the best part yet. X-Wing. Okay, there's a Ford tri-motor. Now at university, I had a chance to fly in one of those and said, oh, no, no, maybe not. I wasn't afraid of it because I'd just flown in a Huey at that point, but with the door open for that matter. So I wasn't really afraid. It was just like that. I said, nah, dang, I kicked myself. But that would have been fun. All right, 747 cockpit. Oh, they have like four seats in there. Hey, whoops. Okay, what's he doing? Of all the men who attacked the flying problem in the 19th century, Otto Lilienthal was easily the most important. We'll be right. So that's, uh, wow, a flying contraption by Otto. I wonder if he invented the automobile. The restaurant will be closing in 30 minutes. Did you hear that? Restaurant. <laughs> okay. All right, let's read some of these. International Frühwoche, Berlin, Johannesthal. Daily aeroplane flights in Florence, Florence South Carolina. Aeromeat. You sound like Meetups we have now for our own sort of thing, like 3D printing and stuff. It is rocket science. Web telescope. In space. No one can hear you scream. Oh, okay, maybe you can hear some people scream. There we go. Number one. 
exit through the gift shop, except here it's called Mission Supplies. Supplies, supplies, supplies. Like many museums, there are always supplies around every corner. There's a supplies around every corner. Well, three Smithsonian's in one day. That's a lot of knowledge. Mr. Spock. The autobiography, the life of a Federation legend. And obligatory Spock socks. Uh, Spock socks. <laughs> and um, I guess it's logical that it only has ears. Spock socks. Well, thanks for tuning in. We're here at the Air and Space Museum here in Washington, D.C. Here's that, and then this is the obligatory gift shop on the way out. Laika's like window, the legacy of a Soviet space dog. And there's the Martian, Andy Weir. Here's some luggage tags. Some of them are rather entertaining, especially this one. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I threw the DC-3, which is even older. This is a 7. No, they don't, that's not a 3, is it? It is. Yeah, I flew one and on. Yeah. Flew in. Here we go, a DC-7. There's a little So what's nice about these is they give free champagne during free fall. <laughs> Right. That's, that's like when you move your arm left and right. <laughs>